Because one of the first things women notice is whether you have money or not. Not because they want the money. And this is a big misunderstanding here. Women don't really care about your money. They know they can go out and get money on their own. But what they do think about money is that it's a sign that you have other qualities that they do desire. That's why um, men can have all the money in the world and still lose their woman. Because money is not the focus. Money is just the signal to them that you may have the qualities that they desire. And that's why they look at money as such a big factor, because money generally means you're successful. You know how to obtain goals. You know how to grow a kingdom. But unfortunately, nowadays, there's a lot of guys with money that haven't done shit. They don't know how to grow a business. They, they are not successful. They may have inherited their money. They may be very emotional and unstable. And while the money attracts the woman, it's not what's going to keep her there. I haven't faked any orgasms, but I feel like I had more orgasms with girls than boys. Yeah. I think I had an orgasm with a boy twice. Or maybe daddy. Just twice. From three years. I had to be in one position twice in three years? I did it. Mm-mm. That shit is cat, man. It's so much cap in there. You got women in the comment section saying, you lying. You got other women in the comment section saying, why don't you hand them over to me? And I'm going to just tell y'all, man, women try to sabotage a man's image. She tries to belittle him and, you know, lower his self-esteem and his confidence by saying, oh, he never made me climax. Women make it seem like it's so hard for them to climax. It's not hard. <laughs> it makes it seem like it's the hardest thing in the world. And it's not at all. It's super simple. When a narcissist knows things are coming to an end, they will set up a season finale to discard you long before you can catch on to what's going on. Chances are they've already started planning this by planting seeds in people, family, friends, co-workers, weeks and months before without your knowledge. Whether it's them or you that's going to end it, it doesn't matter. If it's you, they know. They know when you've caught on to them and when you've had enough. How do they do this? They tell people that they have done everything and put forth all this effort to make the relationship work. But all you want to do is argue and you don't appreciate all the wonderful things that they've done for you. So when things do come to an end, those people have already been mentally prepped to favor their side, so to speak. Those people's reaction will be, wow, they said that person was crazy. They were 10 steps ahead of you because you weren't aware. If you're a single woman and you are emotionally healthy and you've done your own work and you want to find an emotionally healthy man who's owned his shit and done his own work on himself, then one of the key questions you should be asking very early on to weed out any toxic men is, are you a part of MGTOW? I'll probably be crucified for this since it's such a huge movement, but I don't really care because it can be very, very toxic and women need to know. Ladies, I'm trying to help y'all out, okay? If you're trying to really get a high value man, quit doing habits of a 16 year old if you're in your mid 20s to young 40s. Quit doing the habits of a teenager. If you're out here and you say, oh, you know what? I don't need a man. I... Look, it's gonna catch up to you. Time will catch up to you. If all you're worried about is posting some sexy photos and see how much clout you get, you are stuck doing the same thing a teenager is doing. Go out there to a networking event, go to a wine bar, Put your phone down, talk about some intelligent stuff, stir his mind, show that you're compassionate, nurturing, caring, and sensual, but don't go out here stuck on your phone and all you want is some attention or some man trying to hit you up on DMs. If you're trying to get a high value man, act like a woman, please. I made a funny response video to a ridiculous question I received asking, why do women like to destroy men? But some of you were kind of triggered by it because it hits close to home. So I will balance that joke with a true story. One of my friends had been divorced for a couple years when his ex-wife reached out and wanted to get back together. 
She said it'd be good for the kids, and he really missed his kids. They remarry, and she says she wants to move out of state, have a clean start in a new place. So he quits his job, sells the house, and goes. Everything's going great, and the relationship is fabulous. They get a new house, they get the kids registered in a new private school, and then he gets served divorce papers. She used him to finance the move. He felt manipulated, because he was, but that's not the end of his story. I mean, bad stuff can happen to us all the time. But after the dust settles, the choice is yours. You either let that destroy you or motivate you. When it comes to marriage, this actually has some proof. According to the source, women with six or more premarital sexual partners are almost three times less likely to be in a stable marriage, which is defined as a marriage of over five years. I'm gonna be 38 years old in two months. I am currently going through my first, hopefully last, divorce, and I just keep asking myself, why is it so hard to find somebody who wants to fuck on a regular basis and just pay half the bills? Like, why are y'all motherfuckers playing? Like, can't you just be chill? Like, we could do that shit. That's all I'm looking for. The bar is literally that fucking low. Hey guys, Cousin Carl here. Here's why you don't want to get married. This woman is attractive, nice looking, a little curvy, but attractive. That's not the issue. By the way, this is a generalization of modern female behavior and not a personal attack on this woman's video. Every man's preference and taste is different. First thing to note, she's going through a divorce and more than likely will be emotionally stressed and damaged for a couple of years from that relationship. Just how it is after divorce for males and females. However, divorce is a windfall, a payday for women, regardless of how she treated her husband. And if you make more money than she does, your assets are exposed, not hers. Rewind the video and listen closely. Now she wants financial support from her prospective new guys to pay half the bills and fuck her on a regular basis. In a marriage, it's supposed to be for better or worse. Here's what will happen. She'll get upset, close the garage doors, no more morning sex, no more cheek clapping, no more wild and crazy. You'll get depressed and she'll get lazy. She'll cook and clean and polish your machine when she feels like it. Then, over time, rinse and repeat, serving you divorce papers, and you'll be the second ex-husband who she said was abusive and lost half his shit to. Guys, date her, but don't get married. If you just can't live without her, she makes your toes curl doing double backflips, get a prenup or a domestic partner agreement. Marriage is based on trust, and divorce is based on the higher income earner, usually the male. She has no skin in the game. In marriage, all she has to do is wake up one day and change her mind about being with you. You lose half your shit every time, and she'll get another guy, the next in line. An increasing number of Western men are looking for potential wives abroad. Why is that? Well, let's listen to a fresh perspective from a European woman about this. There's also this big culture of Western men moving, Western men or foreign men moving to Thailand to date, to get wives, etc. And as a Western woman, Western started noticing actually the differences between uh, the Asian women and the Western women. And I actually I started to like compare both of them and um, why would that be that uh, the Western men are going to Thailand to uh, well what I decided is that it's uh, the women in Western world they are so pushing for their rights and the manly woman that they forgot forget to be uh, women what if you different send her money Today I posted my cash app name and my oil change receipt. It was $500. Expensive, but that's not the point. So, someone sent me $500, I posted it. Then somebody sent me $1,000 and I posted it. So normalize. Sending the woman that you're interested in money, and if another man is sending her money, make it a cash app competition. Congratulations, you played yourself. Rehabs for broken men. We are not rehabs 
for broken men. We are not rehabs for broken men. We are not rehabs for broken men. We are not rehab. We are not banks for broke women. Also, if we use your logic, then that means don't come crying to us when you're on your period. Don't come to us when you're depressed. Don't come to us when you're having body confidence issues. You know, you're strong, independent women. You don't need us to help you. What? Just a bit of insight. Do you want to know why you find so many broken men? Because you were the ones that broke us in the first place. It's the classic, it's equality when it suits you. These are the same people that want us to open up and show our emotions, yeah? Be honest, if you can't be there for your partner when they're going through stuff, then you're a shit partner. You've literally failed at being a boyfriend, girlfriend, they friend, whatever. The fact that you guys think this is empowering too? Ugh. What a truly ugly mindset to have, man. Ugh.